Hi, my name is Elise Chayabracha Adelson. Welcome to today's Vinyasa Flow, 45 minutes, focusing on support and steadiness to help smooth the scatter. We'll start off in a comfortable seated position. Feel free to use an extra rolled mat or blanket underneath your seat. And blocks are suggested as well, but you could also use a chair or a coffee table. Comfortable seated position. Placing one hand on your heart, one on your belly. Let's take a good couple cycles of breath to check in, to check in with what it feels like to be in this body today right here, right now, no judgments, no expectations. A moment of honesty, self-honesty in order to move from a place of truth and integrity for where you are today. Invite in a healing and nourishing and supportive breath, supporting you from the front, back and sides, from the inside out, throughout the practice, throughout your movement. You are supported. One more full but not forceful cycle of breath. Slowly begin to open your eyes if they were closed. And let's circle out. Let's show our wrist and our feet some love. So straighten out your legs. First, wiggle your fingers and toes. Get some air in between those toes. You can even spread them wide. And now circle the wrist and the ankles in one direction. And the other. meeting hands and knees. Again, patting up your knees with a blanket, if that's what your body's asking for. Now we'll start off with some more wrist love. So with the wrist, you may need to have the knees and hands closer in towards each other. Turn your fingertips to face your knees, your body. And then relax the shoulders away from your ears. Put a slight bend in your elbows. And make sure you're not gripping anywhere in the face, in the eyeballs, soften your eyeballs. And then we'll slowly begin to peel our hands away first starting with the heels of your hands. And keeping that slight bend in your elbows. And then begin to peel a little bit more away until the thumbs lift off and then brighten through your palms. Stay here, relax your eyeballs. Extend out through the thumb a little bit more. And then slowly roll into the knuckles, the fingertips, pause here. Brighten through the palms, center the palms outward for another three two and one, slowly peel your hands away from the mat and you can circle the wrist. That feels good to you. The opposite, the back of your hands onto the mat. So back of the hands onto the mat. Knees and fingers can be closer in towards each other. Shoulders soften away from your ears. Make sure you're not locking your elbows. You can have a slight bend. Relax your face, stay here or make fist, closing the fingers together and open the hands wide. Do that four more times, best you can. Distribute the weight evenly, thumb side and pinky side. Good, two more. And one more. Slowly peeling your hands away, standing on your knees. Circle the wrist and the other direction. 
Okay, now come on to your forearm. So a forearm stretch with or without the blanket. Palms facing up and placing your hands and your elbows about shoulder width can help to take off any watches or jewelry. So my palms are flipping up. I'm spreading the fingers and best I can, pressing all the fingers, thumbs also towards the ground. Now press the ground away. So my shoulders are away from my ears and then pressing away, broaden through the shoulder blades. And you can let your head go here. And breathing with that three dimensional breath, supported and steadied with the fullness of your breath for another three, two, and one, slowly releasing, coming onto your hands and knees. One of my favorites, scapular circles. The arms are squeezing towards straight, belly and ribs soften in. I elevate my shoulder blades to my ears and I press away and the shoulder blades down the back and then shoulder blades together. Embracing awkward here. You're circling best you can with your scapula. And one more time, this direction. And switch directions, other way. <laughs> yeah, it's a little fun for the brain and body. And you might have a surprising awakening of the muscles around your shoulder blades. And I know it's very easy to fall into moving with the spine, the cat cow. I'm catching myself as well. <laughs> One more time, sense of humor and curiosity, very important in this exploration and slowly releasing. Let's make our way into puppy dog pose. So walk the arms forward, keep your thigh bones straight up and down, active through the arms. So keep pressing the hands down. It could be helpful to have a block underneath your head. Keep the back of your neck nice and long and keep those arms active. Press hands down, knees down, tops of the feet down and lengthen through the spine, back of the skull. And slowly releasing, walking your hands back in, block to the side. And again, let's meet on our forearms. So we're meeting on our forearms, about shoulder width apart. Best you can explore scapular circles here. So we'll first move in one direction, about three to four times each direction. Keep pressing the ground away with the back of your hands, your forearms and your elbows throughout the movement. Switching directions, relax your face, your eyeballs and your jaw. And one more. And slowly releasing, walking your hands back to kneeling. Sit your hips onto your heels or you could stand on your knees. Drop your chin to center and half circles here. So lifting up, lifting with the chin towards the front right corner and then drop your chin towards the right armpit. Pass through center so the chin is more towards the left armpit. And then lift your chin to the front or top left corner. Do that about three more times each direction. Leading with your chin. So you're maintaining length in the back of the skull best you can. This next round chin towards top right corner, stay here, or open your mouth slightly and reach the bottom part of your jaw forward. For three, it's like a underbite or underbite, two. <laughs> and one, slowly releasing, chin to center, top left corner, reach up, open the mouth slightly, 
and reaching the bottom of the jaw forward. And slowly release, chin to center. Now keep your chin to the bottom right corner towards your right armpit and do teeny tiny nods here, yes. For three, two, and one. Chin passes through center and now to the left armpit. Teeny tiny nods here for three, two, and one. Chin to center and chin floats up. Walk those hands forward, wrist slightly in front of your shoulders and curl your toes under, hips back and up, downward facing dog, pedal it out, move in any way that feels more like you. Allow this to be an exploration. Great, and then lower down to your knees again, shoulders below your wrist. Right. Lift the armpit slightly and plug your arm bones into the shoulder sockets. Now press away and then keep the shoulder blades towards the lower back, towards the hips, broaden through the shoulder blades. The upper back broadens. Back of the skull nice and long. So there's this wrapping like action around your outer armpits. Reach your right leg back, curl the toes under, keep the belly and ribs in, and then the left leg making your way into plank pose. Keep wrapping the outer armpits in, armpits of power, downward facing dog, hips up and back. Let's do a good couple more rounds, floating it forward, staying connected to your armpits of power and hips up and back. Three more, float it forward and float it back. Two more, float it forward, float it back. And the last round, floating it forward, floating it back. Downward facing dog, pressing the hands down, stay connected to your armpits of power. And lift your right leg up. And as you exhale, bend the right knee and draw it in towards your chest hover. Do that about four more times, reach up. And knee to nose hover. Three more up. And in. Two more, inhale. Exhale, hover. And one more. And hover. Right leg reaches up, place the right foot to the ground. Left leg reaches up. As you exhale, knee in and hover four more times. Also awakening a little bit. Inner fire and Awakening the core to inform and support and steady our bigger movements. Good, two more. And one more. Taking breaks whenever you need. Downward facing dog, we meet. And then right leg lifts, exhale, step your right foot forward. I'm gonna grab my blocks for this round. Drop the back knee down and pause and notice. Hello to your hips. Could be on the top of the foot. And keep the back of your skull nice and long. Pausing here, relax your face and breathe. You could always bring the blocks up higher or instead of blocks, fingertips. And slowly releasing, hands to the ground, downward facing dog. Left leg lifts up, bend the knee, draw it in, hover for a moment, and left foot in between the hands. Top of the back foot, or you could curl the back toes under. Make sure you're not collapsing. There may be a slight looking inward here, but be mindful that you're still pressing the ground away with the front foot and the top of the back foot, back knee. So there isn't any collapsing. Full, steady, supportive breath. Shoulders soften from ears for another three, two, and one, slowly releasing. Hands to the ground and step back, downward facing dog. 
right leg lifts up and bend the knee, right foot forward. Hands on blocks. You can even lift them up a little bit higher. Bend through the front knee, lengthen through the spine, long spine. And as you exhale, press the right foot down, especially in the right heel, and begin to lengthen through that front leg. And I'm going to stay high with the upper body. Inhale, lengthen, extend the left heel back. Press the right foot down and lengthen through the front leg. Hello, hamstrings. Let's do that about four or five more times. Rhythm of your own breath, special attention to pressing down through that front foot. Own breath, pressing down through the right foot. Left leg, back leg is still steady and strong. And we'll do one more. Good. And then bend through the front knee, blocks to the side, hands down, step back, down dog. Left leg reaches up. Stepping the left foot forward, keep the back knee lifted, fingertips on the ground or on blocks. Lengthen through the spine, back of the skull on, press the right heel back. Keep that back leg steady and strong, press to the left foot and lengthen through the front leg. Again, inhale, lengthen forward, steady and supportive breath, pressing through the left heel. Do that about four, five more times, own breath. I'm gonna keep from collapsing in my wrists. I'm coming onto my fingertips. And a couple more. I'm pressing fingertips down into the blocks or to the ground. So I am not collapsing throughout the movement. Sense of steadiness and support to maintain a sense of buoyancy and flow. And we'll meet hands to the ground, step it back into downward facing dog. Similar that we did before, right leg will lift up. Now bend the right knee, open up the right hip. I'm gonna circle my right knee to my right tricep or elbow, and then reverse it, straighten the right leg. Bend the knee and circle it around. And right leg up. Three more, own breath. Keep pressing the ground away with your hands and your left foot. About one more. So we do about a total of five on this side. And right foot down to the ground, switching sides. Left leg up, bend the left knee, open up the left hip, circle left knee forward, outside of tricep or elbow, you could hover, and pass it through center. Left leg straightens. About four more. Rhythm of your own breath. Pressing the ground away throughout the movement. Relaxing your eyeballs as much as this is strengthening practice. It is a, also a soft face practice. And we'll meet. Left leg up, left foot to the ground, and lower down to your knees. Take whatever variation of child's pose you like. I'm gonna sweep my arms back and rock my forehead side to side, softening the front of my brain towards the back brain. Even let the hips sway side to side, taking power in the pause. It could be really nice to stop and notice the effects of your efforts so far. We don't have to plow throughout through all the postures all at once, all the time. <laughs> Slowly make your way onto your hands and knees, downward facing dog. Pedal it out however you need. Right leg lifts, bend the right knee, right foot forward. Hands on blocks. I'm gonna bring my blocks higher this time for more support, feel free to do the same back foot steps, teeny bit more forward than before. 
something a little bit similar that we did the first round of flowing lunges. Walk the blocks back as much as you need. I'm gonna lengthen through the front leg and now I flex my left ankle and toes towards my shin. Keeping the right leg lengthened, right foot presses down into the ground. And again, flex the ankle, so not just the toes, but the entire ankle, and then lower down. Let's do that three more times. Own breath. Keep the spine nice and long. Back of the skull nice and long. One more. Great, now bend through the front knee, walk your blocks forward. Make sure the blocks are nice and even. We'll come into a warrior three variation. I'm gonna bend the back knee slightly and then press through the right foot like crazy, lift the left leg. Now we're not gonna stay here quite yet. A couple more bouncy bounces, four more. So we're inviting in a sense of resiliency and buoyancy. I'm gonna move back so you can see me more. Press through the right foot like crazy as you lift the left leg. So activate the standing leg glutes. Do that two more. In the sense of buoyancy and bounciness. <laughs> One more. Let's keep it up here, moving the outer right hip back. Right hip crease reaches back, heart forward. Press down through the right heel. So you may notice the weight shifting more into the toes. Try to bring it more into the heels. Press down for three, two, and one, I get to bend the right knee and begin to slowly as you can lower down. Let's pick a count of eight, seven, six, five. Press to the right heel, three, two, one. Left foot down and spring back up. Lower down as slowly as you can. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, bounce it back up, last round. Bend the right knee, slowly lower down, pressing through the right heel like crazy for five, four, three, two, and one, touch down. Downward facing dog. Downward facing dog might feel pretty good right now. Left leg reaches up. Bend the left knee, reaching, stepping left foot forward. Find in your blocks, stepping the back foot forward a little bit more. Walk the blocks back a little bit more and lengthen through the front leg. Flexing the left ankle so you can see toes to shins and press it down. This side might be really different. Again, flex and press the sole of the foot down three more times. Own breath, lifting and lowering. Two more, make sure you're not collapsing into your wrist. You're pressing the ground away, pressing the blocks away. And last round, bend through the front knee, walk the blocks forward and spring forward into warrior three. Couple more times like that. Lower and spring back up. Lower, get springy if you need to bend the back knee even more. About two more. Also gets the heart rate up, pockets of fire, get the life force moving, and we'll meet in warrior three. Notice where the weight is on your Standing foot, bring the weight more back into the heel. Keep a slight bend in the knee without locking the left knee. And then engage the right glutes, reach the right heel back for another three, two, and one. Bend the left knee slowly as you can, lower for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Bounce into warrior three, slowly lower. Bending the left knee for eight, seven, hello glutes, five, four, three, outer left hip back, 
two and one. Spring it forward, last round. Bend the left knee, lower eight. You got this, six, five, four, three. Press the left heel, two and one. Touchdown, downward facing dog. Best downward dog ever. Pedal it out. Move in any way that feels like you. And lower the knees down. Bring the hips back. Circle out the wrist. You can even bring the palms down. And knuckles face down as you lift the fist up and the elbows. Like your karate kid painting the fence. And slowly make your way onto your hands and your knees. Blocks can move to the side. Hands and knees, reach your right leg to the right. Left knee below the left hip. Curl the back toes under if you like and bring the hips back towards the back and inhale forward and exhale back. Or if you want, you could inhale back, exhale forward. Whichever breath feels best to you. Two more. And one more. Let's meet forward, walk your hands diagonal to the left, diagonal to the left. Bring your hips back a little bit and then reach your right arm forward. Take a nice little stretch possibly through the right side body. Breathe, let your head go. Pressing down through the right foot, especially the outer edge. Three, two, and one, slowly make your way to center, hands to center, and then hands and knees. Switching sides, left leg to the left. Press down through the left foot and bring your hips back and forward. Again, your own breath, inhaling back, exhaling forward, or you could reverse that. Exploring, you may feel this in your inner hips or your inner thighs. Again, allow this to be an inquiry. Curious about the movement, not trying to perfect or achieve the deepest variation. Moving with kindfulness, walking your hands to the right diagonal, bring the hips back a little and then reach your left arm a little bit more forward and breathe. Press down through the left foot, the back of the skull long. Steady, supportive breath. And slowly releasing, walking your hands forward and then hands and knees. Make your way now to your belly, all the way to your belly. Overlap one hand on top of the other and forehead rests on your hands. Just pause and notice as we change our shape and relationship to space and gravity closer to the ground. And now make sure your knees are pointing straight down. So you may need to lift up the right leg, straighten it and turn the right knee down. And then the other feet about hip width distance apart, forehead to the ground. You're gonna start off in a, like a fingertip cobra pose. I think I'm gonna change direction so I have more space for my hands. The fingertips could be like around like the level of your head or your shoulders, a little bit more far forward. Press the fingertips down and the tops of the feet down. Now press your pubic bone down, your pubic symphysis down. And think of lengthening rather than lifting. Press fingertips down, pubic symphysis down, shoulder blades onto your back, lift the shoulders away from the ground, and then lengthen your chest and your head away from the ground. Okay, so maintain more length. It doesn't matter how high you come up, keep the pubic symphysis down, pubic bone down, and then slowly lower. You could change your fingertips to a different place. A couple more times, let's do about four more. 
lengthening away from the ground. Keep pressing the pubic symphysis away. And you can roll up, articulate through the spine as you roll up and roll down. Nice, so I'm pressing the pubic symphysis down, rolling up to the spine. Ribs soften towards the back body. Again, to add more support. One more. And slowly releasing. I turn my head to the left and reach my right arm out to the right. So right arm to the right, turning your head to the left, and change directions here. And left hand is on the ground, left elbow bent up towards the ceiling. Okay, and gently press down through your right hand and then press your left hand down. We're not gonna do the full variation here, just a gentle bringing the left shoulder blade Left shoulder blade back of the heart and begin to turn your rib cage, your thoracic spine towards the ceiling, towards. It's very gentle here. Relax the face and keep the back of the skull long. So you may need to drop the chin slightly towards the chest for another three, two, and one. Slowly releasing and turn your head the other way. Left arm to the left. Out straight out from the shoulder, right hand to the ground, right elbow to the sky. And begin to bring right shoulder blade back of the heart, turning the rib cage to the right towards the ceiling. For another three, two, and one, slowly releasing. Now you can do the same variation you did before, or same setup. Looking to the left, pressing the right hand gently down. So you're lengthening from the bottom of the right armpit to the top of the right shoulder, pressing down. If you want, the hips can roll to the right as well. Chin slightly towards the chest, stay here, or bend the left knee, reaching the left foot towards the ground behind you. If this does not feel good for your lower back, then take a different variation. Do the thing that you did before. Pressing right hand gently down for another three, two, and one, slowly releasing and switching sides. Left arm out, bending the right knee. If that's the variation you're taking, or first start off with that thoracic rotation. Right shoulder blade back of the heart. <clears throat> And spinning your ribs to the right. Relax your face for another three, two, and one. Slowly releasing, finding center. And again, overlap your hands one on top of the other and rest your forehead on your hands. Relax your face. Notice. Again, the effects of your efforts and these shifts or changes. And then push yourself up onto your hands and your knees. All fours. And then bring your hips back. And then reach your arms forward. And as you inhale, you need to roll forward. Maintain length as you come into like a variation of up dog, but you're not collapsing. You're pressing the hands down, collarbones broad, lengthen through the spine. So you're not collapsing into your hips like this. There's an element of support from the inside out, from the core, and exhale, bring the hips back. Do that about four, five more times, own breath. Again, steadiness and support throughout the movement. Not collapsing, not dropping my body forward. Right, gentle wrapping around the waist like a tube of toothpaste throughout the movement. So there's stability, not rigidity. There's a difference. Stability asks and invites adaptability and rigidity is not as adaptable. Right? Stability 
can support through the movement and change in a more sustainable way, sustainable movement here. Let's meet in child's pose. Good couple cycles of breath, any variation you like. You can flip the palms up, bend the elbows, relax the shoulders and your face. And feel free to take any other shape you need. We'll meet on our backs for Shavasana. Resting pose, it could be nice to have a folded up blanket up to your shoulders for support. And feel free to take up lots of space if that's available to you. And feel what it feels like to take up lots of space. Back of the neck long. Chin slightly nodding inward in self-acknowledgement that you have the strength and enthusiasm to show up for yourself. What often feels like a radical act of self-care. Give the weight of your body to the ground as you soften from the inside out. You are supported. Right? Often the first step in the process of letting go is accepting support from the ground and from your breath. Let the bones of your face be heavy to the back of your skull. Taking this opportunity to drop the brave face. Invite more space in between top and bottom teeth. And allow the front of your brain to melt to the middle of your brain, to the back of your brain, all the way down to the ground. And stay here as long as you're able to, as long as you like. If not, slowly begin to bring movement back to your fingers and toes. Gently turn your head side to side. And with awareness, bring your legs closer together. Bend your knees and hug them into your chest. Give yourself a hug of gratitude for investing this time on your mat. And with awareness, roll on over to whatever side you like. Pause. Head is the last thing to come on up. Comfortable seated position. The eyes could be closed or soft gaze. Overlap your hands on top of your heart. Think of one thing in your life that you are grateful for, no matter how big or small. And we'll end together one cleansing breath. First, empty out all the air from your lungs. Inhale through your nose, fill up. Exhale, ha. And as always, gratitude for practicing together. May it all be a benefit to us and everybody else around us. Namaste. Thank you so much for breathing, moving, and yoga.